Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and welcome to what I eat in a day. This is going to be featuring all mucusless foods and um, I'm also pre-menstrual cycle so uh, it'll give you kind of an idea of what I eat before that goes on as well. So uh, my pre-breakfast this morning I'm having um, a seeded watermelon. So I'm just going to have a few bites of this and then I'm going to go do a little bit of exercise come back and eat a lot of watermelon, and then get on with my day. Okay, so I wanted to talk real briefly just for the um, purpose of this video about uh, the difference between mucus forming and mucusless foods. So basically the difference is one group of foods leaves behind waste in the system that has to be eliminated and the other group of foods helps to eliminate waste that is already within the system and doesn't leave waste behind. So we're talking about the mucusless foods here, fruits and vegetables, they nourish the body, they cleanse the body, they provide energy for the body at no expense to the body. So they don't create excess stress in the body, they help to neutralize toxins, they help to build up the body and repair it uh, and energize and provide energy for the system uh, to run efficiently. The other group of foods, the mucus forming foods, depending on what it is, because there are like different degrees of mucus forming foods and then there's pus forming foods which are your animal products. So I'm going to leave lists of the mucus forming and the mucusless foods in the description box. Check them out, read a little bit about the, that page. Also get a copy of the mucusless site healing system. I'll leave a link for that in this video as well. Um, keep in mind I don't promote the fasting aspect of the, the book, but it's a really interesting read and it might help expand your mind more into this topic. Um, and like I said, with the mucus forming foods, they're just different degrees of that. So you can still include them in your diet. And as long as you're, the majority of your diet is mucusless, you can still have some mucus forming foods and they're not going to be as detrimental to your system. So it's important to understand that um, how these foods work in your system also has a lot to do with how healthy you are, your age, what your past diet was, what your current diet is. Um, your current food cravings. So this is definitely a system, a transitional system um, that you want to take and not just go all into just eating fruit or all into eating raw or whatever. You can transition and still um, support the cleansing, the natural cleansing ability of your body with the foods that you're eating. So if you need help with this, you can also sign up for my coaching group. It's only $30 for unlimited lifetime coaching from me. All right, I, I'm a sweaty mess. Just got back from the gym and I'm about to have lunch. I did, um, so far today, 70 minutes cycling and I did some shoulders. I did some weights, so. Here are, I'm gonna have three bananas and uh, this is about a pound of dates. Okay, now I'm making some simple wraps with nori sheet, cucumber, tomato, and greens. So I'm getting ready to go out for a bike ride on my brother's bike, actually. I left mine at home. I'm at my mom's house. Okay, so <laughs> I'm about to have a snack, so I'm gonna have some orange juice. I just got done grocery shopping, and I got some of these um, white nectarines. I haven't had any yet this year because they're usually pretty expensive, and I, I'm worried about buying stone fruit because sometimes it doesn't ripen, but I got some super ripe, super fragrant white flesh nectarines that I'm gonna enjoy for a snack for dinner, and yeah, and then I'll show you what dinner is. <laughs> 